This is KGW News at Sunrise. Washington has its first winners in its vaccine lottery. No names have been announced yet. Check those voicemails. But there is still the question of veterans and anyone who got their shots at a federal site. How the state plans on including everyone and how Oregon is trying to sort all that out before its June 28th lottery. And our ocean is changing. Soon there will be a new research center at Oregon State University to figure out why. A look into what they're studying coming up. Monk by day, DJ by night. <laughs> We're going to meet the Japanese man who figured out a way to blend his passion for prayer and his ear for house music. <laughs> it is this morning's Journey to Tokyo segment. It's getting us ready for next month's Olympics in Japan. Yeah, that looks super fun. Hey, good morning to you. Happy Thursday. We are almost to the weekend, and you've got a pretty cool shot this yeah. hour. Give me some bass, Mr. Carney. Thank you very much. Let's go to the, the snow cam. This is up at Timberline Lodge. Not unusual to have snow showers this time of the year, but always kind of fun to see it up there. Temperature is holding at 30 degrees. Snow level today will be about 5,500 feet. That's where it was yesterday for some scattered showers. Real quick, there are a few scattered showers in the coast range and also near the coast. The rain out east, you can see moving away from Baker City, will continue to push off into Idaho today. So for Portland, Salem, and Vancouver, this still looks to be a mainly dry Thursday with a shower chance, if you will. 55 right now, 64 at noon. The high temperature today, 70 degrees. Not bad. All right, Rod, thank you. Topping your news at 5 a.m. Washington officials reaching out to the winners of the first round of prizes in the COVID vaccine lottery. So one person has won $250,000 and 200 others have won smaller prizes. Lottery officials telling people to check their voicemails because you may be a winner. But this first drawing did not include anyone who got a shot at a federal facility like Joint Base Lewis McCord or the VA. The federal government does not have a system to share those names with states. The same thing happened in Oregon. We are working with the federal government to figure out if there is a way to solve that problem so that people who have received a vaccine through the federal channels, uh, Department of Defense, veterans, could opt in. The governor also said the state is working on a way for people to add their own names to the state database if they were vaccinated through the federal government. But so far, nothing's in place yet. Oregon says it has to do the same, and we expect to get details of that workaround later this week. Of course, the entire point of the lottery is to get more shots in arms. But the Washington Health Department says it's too soon to know definitively how much impact it's had. We do believe that these incentives are going to move some people, and that's the reason they've been used around the country. The Secretary of Health said Washington has seen more people book appointments and clinics are filling up again. Health experts say by next week, they should have more solid evidence about how the incentive program is working. Let's take a look at some of the other local news headlines we're following this morning, and we start with new details on Sunday's Southeast Portland shooting that left four people dead. The Oregonian says a botched drug deal on Southeast Boise Street led to the gunfight. Three men involved in this flew in from Texas to buy marijuana, and two Portland brothers are among the four people who were killed. The report says police found tubs of pot. That's how they described it, tubs of pot inside that house. One of the men from Texas got away. Seven lost hikers were found and rescued on Monday after spending 30 hours trying to get to Ramona Falls. They left for the falls early Sunday afternoon, but took a wrong trail because of incorrect information that they found online. As night set in on Sunday, the hikers had to set up a makeshift campsite. A rescue crew found all seven of them Monday afternoon and wound up getting one of them out on a special, a special stretcher that is with wheels. Oregon lawmakers passed a resolution that will make it easier to build more affordable housing units on land that is not zoned for residential use. The resolution will also allow for increased housing density in some places. This bill will now head to Governor Brown for approval. And those are some of our Thursday morning headlines. Also this morning, a follow up to a story we brought you yesterday on all the graffiti cleanup along area highways. Since overpasses and other structures were getting tagged so much, ODOT hired contractors to help remove it. 
They've been working along I-5, I-405, and I-205. After we aired the story, we talked with one of the contractors. He says there's one big problem. Unfortunately, one of the things that we're up against is a lot of areas that we do cover within 24 to 48 hours, it's been re-impacted. Uh, By that, he means the spaces are re-tagged. We will keep you posted as we hear more. For their part, ODOT says they plan on removing graffiti along I-84 as well. Well, Portland's mayor is asking you to help clean up the city. It's partnering with Saul to host a trash cleanup effort at the end of this month. It's called Pick It Up Portland. It'll be June 25th and 26th. That's a Friday and Saturday. It will include 20 different events in neighborhoods across the city. Solve organizes trash pickup events regularly, like this one hosted by KGW's one The down, Story team last down. month. Solve provides the supplies and offers online sign up for volunteers. Mayor Wheeler is encouraging everyone to get involved to help the city recover as more events return and businesses reopen from pandemic restrictions. All right, the headline for this next story is beavers are set up to help save fish. But for this story, we're actually talking about Oregon State University beavers. Absolutely. The school was just selected to lead a NOAA Institute for Marine Research. As Keely Chalmers explains, this is a big multi-million dollar deal. These days, the ocean off our coast is facing challenges like never before. Challenges like dead zones, massive areas of the ocean floor where sea life literally suffocates due to lack of oxygen. Add to that the marine heat waves the ocean has been experiencing, commonly referred to as warm blobs. And then there is the issue of ocean acidification. The ocean is becoming so acidic, shellfish, like oysters, struggle to form their protective shells. But now, thanks to $37 million in federal funding over the next five years, Oregon State University will be able to send more scientists out onto the ocean to find out what is going on now and what will likely happen in the future. Yeah, it really allows us to do on, on the ocean science. And it literally allows OSU scientists to go to sea and take the pulse of the ocean. The university was just selected to lead a NOAA Marine Research Institute. Longtime OSU ocean researcher Francis Chan will direct it, an honor he worked pretty hard to get. We had 60 days to respond to this call for a proposal. I work 59 days. I, I took Christmas off. But Chan says all that work was worth it to bring Oregon into the spotlight as a leader in ocean research and find solutions to problems that likely won't go away anytime soon. If you are an Oregon student wanting to do ocean science, come to OSU, because we, we have to need. Keely Chalmers, KGW News. Mm. Wow. Hey, you know, real quick, Drew, uh, for, for uh, youngsters or young people out there thinking about getting into college or what they want to study, that is an incredibly growing field of scientific research, you know, oceanography, studying, studying the changes in, in the marine life, as was just mentioned, uh, and it's going to be for decades to come. So really a great opportunity for our young people to think about making that career choice. I like how you answered the question that I didn't even ask. Oh, like, you just read my mind <laughs> and answered the question. That was pretty cool. <laughs> Okay, perhaps we should get together sometime. Here we go. We have clouds over the Wells Fargo building. It is a mostly cloudy but dry start for us. We're at 55 degrees here in the city. Radar is showing a couple of things. Number one, this area of rain, which is getting pretty close to just hugging the uh, Idaho border, is moving off to the east. You folks expected to go on to have a dry day in far eastern Oregon. And then we have a few scattered showers, including some heavier showers uh, dotting uh, the landscape moving up into the coast range this morning. Here are those that have moved just outside of Astoria. But dry weather in Portland, there's a light shower outside of Salem. I still think today goes on to be mainly dry. Just realize the rain chance up and down I-5 is not zero. There could be a spotty shower at some point. Future cast at 8 o'clock this morning. I mean, that's that's mainly dry, right? This does pick up some showers in the coast range. Now, most of those would fade, I think, by the time they push uh, out of the uh, mountains into the flats of the I-5 corridor. Here's Friday morning. 
I believe this will be fairly steady rain in the morning hours. This is 8 o'clock. You saw a big push of rain in the early afternoon come through and then still scattered showers if you have plans tomorrow evening. So, uh, you know, I think we still have some graduation ceremonies going on. Hopefully the rain will kind of leave us alone. Here are the early morning numbers. It's 47 in Salem and Kelso, 52 up in Astoria where they've had some rain showers. And then we have uh, 40s out in John Day, Baker City and Burns this morning. All right, so I think we have a chance to get up to 70 today. Tomorrow the rain we talked about could be a quarter of an inch. Saturday daytime is kind of a break, a scattered shower chance. And we get a push of rain Saturday night into Sunday, which is looking really wet at this point, more so than it has been. So that could be a good old fashioned rainy day. And then real quick jump to Wednesday, that sun in 83 kicks off a long stretch, we think, of sunny, warm to hot weather. That's your forecast. 83. All right, Rod, thank you so much. Well, it is tough to understand how kids are feeling during this pandemic. Coming up, details about a project capturing their voices and how they made it through this historic time. Hmm. Hey, welcome back. We want to get um, to some breaking news that Portland police are investigating. This is in Northeast Portland, where a shooting happened early this morning near Rocky Butte Park. It's kind of near 205 there in Northeast right now. Not many details police are giving out, but you can see about uh, four police officers on scene. They have been checking that car that's parked there off of the road. We don't know if anyone was injured or if this is a shots fired call yet. We'll update you when more information becomes available. Now to some of the national headlines in your morning rush. The company behind the Keystone XL pipeline is pulling the plug on the project. It was supposed to move crude oil from the sand fields in western Canada to Nebraska, but President Biden wouldn't reinstate its permit to cross the U.S. border. He canceled it when he first took office, saying burning oil sands would speed up climate change. Canadian officials couldn't get Biden to change his mind. Wow, that home exploded and it was caught on camera in Memphis. Police say a hit and run driver forced a car off the road, sending it crashing into the home's gas line. It completely destroyed the house. It also damaged others nearby, but no one was seriously hurt. And check this out, the cicadas are back. Not even President Biden is safe. They swarmed the airport as he was about to hop a flight to Europe. One landed on his neck, he had to kind of swat it away. 
But the bugs, whew, they had no mercy on the press plane. They flew into a power unit which grounded the flight for hours. Wow. This sounds like science fiction, but it's fact. That tiny creature has wriggled back to life after 24,000 years. Hmm? The microscopic organism was lying frozen in Siberia in suspended animation. Russian researchers discovered it and detailed their findings in the journal Current Biology. What is it? Okay, <laughs> apparently you can take the dog out of the country, but you can't take the country out of the dog. Tilly, a two-year-old border collie mix, ran away after his family was in a car accident on Sunday. They flooded social media trying to find him. And a local farmer came through. Tilly turned up at his farm to do what the breed does best, herd sheep. <laughs> Love it. The field trip is over, though. Tilly back with his family this morning. And those are some of your Thursday headlines. If we asked Tilly, would he rather stay on the farm, maybe? <laughs> More fun there? All right, a local Girl Scout knows this past year will go down in history, and she wanted to make sure young voices have an outlet to share their pandemic experiences. Right. KGW photojournalist Stephen Redland shows us how she turned that idea into a, an award-winning project. I hope COVID is gone at some point. That'd be great. I hope this is a story I can tell my grandkids and not something that they have to live with themselves. My name is Riley Kessler, and I am a 15-year-old Girl Scout from Portland, Oregon. Riley is a 10th grader living through the challenge of the pandemic like everyone around her. Adapting and changing to all of those shifts in a row, just back to back to back, uh, has been really intense. She feels that she and others her age need to voice their virus experiences. And share them so that people can learn and kind of understand more the perspective of a teenager during these very unprecedented times. Riley, the Girl Scout, is working on her Golden Award. She's also a writer and a reader who's been around the Beaverton City Library all her life. When she approached them about her Girl Scout Capturing History project, they agreed to work together. Right now, a, a lot of the youth voice is kind of lost during the pandemic. So I thought this would give us an opportunity to, um, you know, hear from uh, what youth in the community are going through. Ian Duncanson is the community engagement librarian. The Beaverton City Library asked students age 11 to 18 years old to write an essay, a personal story, a poem, or other form to tell how the COVID-19 pandemic has affected their lives. One student wrote in their essay, I had lots of homework and time at home without routine, which drives me crazy. Another said, I veer around everyone and keep around 20 feet of distance, not six. I start to panic, breathe heavily, and have my heart rate go up whenever anyone gets near me. One other wondered what it would have been like to go through high school the normal way. Riley's going to put together a booklet and we are going to um, add it to the library's local history collection. I've been a Girl Scout since I was in second grade. Um, and it has truly been just a wonderful experience overall. Um, a lot of people don't realize that we do a lot of things outside of just selling cookies during April. Until June 30th, you can submit your story and add to the historic record. You can use your name or just share your experiences without your name. So many people have lost loved ones and um, hopefully you can use this as sort of a, a therapeutic tool almost, if you will and at the same time produce writing that can be shared with the community. In Beaverton, Oregon, I'm Stephen Redland, KGW News. Oh, wow. Getting those feelings out on paper, it definitely helps. All right, Rod, uh, we've, we've both got yellow on. I like yellow that today. Curve. We do, yes. Is it going to be sunny for us? Uh, I think so. Well, kind of like we've been seeing, right? Partly cloudy overall. Uh, remember, there's a shower chance today, but I real feel, really feel like it's going to be mainly dry. Most of us won't see any rain. We have um, kind of a, a broken sky with some cloud cover and some blue up top over uh, Stoller Family Vineyards down in Dayton. 46 is the early morning number there. Here's Fira our KGW dog of the day. What a cute puppy. You got one ear up and one ear down. Use that hashtag KGW dog of the day. You post your pics. Hopefully we'll find them on your social media channels and uh, get them on our show. All right, today's weather map. There is a spotty shower chance at the coast, the coast range, and less so here in the valley. Temperatures generally in the 60s on this part of the state. Now out east, we have solid cloud cover and there's some rain along the Idaho border right now, but those clouds and the rain expected to clear out for a nice day, mostly sunny in 68 degrees this afternoon over in Central Oregon. Okay, here's the forecast. We have some rain coming. It's over the weekend, but we need the rain, right? Today's 70, pretty nice. Tomorrow, 
that morning rain and then afternoon showers could be a quarter of an inch. Saturday day is kind of a break with just a scattered shower chance, but then Saturday evening through much of Sunday, it could be raining and that promises to be a decent soak. And then the shower chances linger through Tuesday. Then after that, we're done with the rain. Maybe guys, maybe for the rest of the month, we'll see a big dry stretch begins uh, next Wednesday, guys. All right, more Rodney at 530 right now that we want to set you up for our next segment on sunrise. We're going to Japan to meet a DJ monk. That's right, DJ as in disc jockey, monk as in man of prayer. This man brought his beats into this 500-year-old temple, and he wound up finding an unexpected following. Also, I want to remind you that KGW and Safeway are teaming up again to bag summer hunger. You can support students and families who normally rely on school meals during the year, but during the summer, those aren't there. So all this week, just donate cash to the Sunshine Division, or you can add a pre-filled bag of groceries at Safeway, and Safeway will match your donation. To find your closest Safeway or to give online, go to BagSummerHunger.com.